meeting for this Monday, October 18th, 2021. And um, tonight we have one item on the agenda. It's a rent and fire authority briefing on the, the proposed fire benefit charge that's on the ballot right now. And um, to go ahead and explain this and answer any questions, um, I'm going to call on Chief Heitman. Thanks for joining us, Chief. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. I think I've met everyone, but just in case, uh, my name is Steve Heitman, and I am the Fire Chief for the Renton Regional Fire Authority. And I'm coming before you tonight to uh, present to you on Proposition 1, which will be on the November 2nd ballot, and it's the renewal of our fire benefit charge. Let me share my screen. Right there. And can everyone see that? Yes. All right, perfect. Okay, so a um, few things that I'm gonna be covering tonight, just give you a brief overview uh, of who we are, especially for those newer on the council, how we serve the community, Proposition 1 and why it's on the November 2nd ballot. Uh, five key facts about the fire benefit charge, or otherwise known as the FBC. Additional information about the FBC and Proposition 1, and then I'll take any questions that you may have for me. So, who we are. Uh, we are serving 135,000 community members and businesses uh, within the city of Renton, Fire District 25 and Fire District 40. Uh, as you may remember, we became an RFA in 2016 after a vote, and that was a joining between Fire District 25 and the city. And when that was formed, we brought over Fire District 40 and their fire suppression uh, contract with us. We staff seven fire stations throughout the area across a little over 33 square miles and they are staffed with firefighters and EMTs who are on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You are a big part of who we're governed by. We have a seven member board, three Renton City Council members, three Renton, or three Fire District 25 commissioners, and then one non-voting Fire District 40 commissioner. And the good news is, is that we just signed in August a new 20 year contract with Fire District 40. Some of the services that we provide, uh, fire suppression, emergency medical services, special response teams such as hazardous materials, water rescue that includes dive rescue, surface water rescue, and swift water rescue, all of which are different disciplines, and then some technical specialties that include rope rescue, trench rescue, confined space. Through the Office of the Fire Marshal, we provide fire inspections, fire investigations, permits, the fire plans review. A lot of that is done in conjunction with the city, uh, which we enjoy that partnership. And then we have specialty programs. As you can see on the right, in 2020, we did just over 21,000 total responses. A little over 16,000, those were for emergency medical services. Almost 1,000 were done for fire response. A little over 1,100 were those special teams responses. And then we had 3,044 other, and others defined by those calls that were received from 911 that weren't of a legal nature, but somebody had an issue they did not know how to solve. And so we sent somebody from the fire department to go and help them with that problem, so providing that service to all the members throughout the RFA. Let's talk a little bit about Proposition 1. Uh, this is renewing our funding source to maintain service levels and response capabilities. Uh, proposition one is a measure on the November 2nd ballot. It's going to be asking voters to decide if they want to continue uh, the fire benefit charge. This is not a new fee for the voters. They approved it initially in 2016 and state law requires that uh, the FBC comes back to be reauthorized by the voters after a six year period, which will be at the end of next year. Currently, this provides approximately 40% of our annual revenue and our operating budget and it contributes to firefighter staffing, safety, equipment, fire engines, units, fire stations. So we pretty much use it across the board as part of that 40% of our budget. Five key facts about the fire benefit charge. The long and short of it is if you need less, you pay less. Uh, the FBC is allocated to property owners based on the risks, hazard, and use of the structures on their property. 
In other words, if you have a fuel storage depot and you need a much larger fire response, such as two engine companies, four engines, and a battalion chief right out of the gate, you end up paying a higher fee for that. If you need a lesser response, such as a residential uh, home or smaller property, you're going to need less. And so with that, uh, we change those fees and uh, you're charged accordingly. Typically, commercial, industrial, and multifamily properties will pay more and the residential properties will pay less. We use a uh, formula that uh, is accepted nationally on this for determining this, and it's based upon the size and square footage, the resources needed, uh, what it is that you do with the property, those sorts of things all factor into this, including a number from the insurance services organization of a uh, factor of 18. And so uh, that formula is what's determined to use for each parcel based upon the fee charged for that. And that's what we end up determining our fire benefit charge off of. Great thing about the FBC, it helps diversify our revenue. The rent RA, RFA has two primary funding sources, and that's the property tax levy and the FBC. Uh, the property tax funding is based on a property's assessed value. Therefore, uh, with economic downturns, that can fluctuate. And so that can create issues in planning as we don't know what those revenues are, are going to be from year to year. Uh, we saw a big fluctuation, especially in the Great Recession of 2007. And we've seen just a, a little bit, not too bad though, or what would have been expected with the pandemic. But it is not as stable as a fire benefit charge. The other thing about tax funding is that we're also subject to the 1% limit on increase. And so each year as property uh, values go up, we collect a little bit more on that. Uh, we were at 80 cents last year and we're currently at about 73 and a half cents uh, for this year. The good thing about that FBC is it's a consistent and reliable source of funding that's based on our fire protection resources required, as I had said previously. And with the combination of these two funds, we get that stability. Uh, we can utilize that FBC to help balance the, our budgeting. And again, with that stability comes better planning for us. Uh, it's also good um, we, because we haven't had to raise it. We initially had to in the second year of the RFA. That was a large jump because all of the costs were not realized until we were actually doing the work uh, from separating from the city. But the good news is since that time, we haven't had to raise it over the last three years, and we are projecting that we won't need to raise it next year in the final year of the current FBC. Uh, as I had said previously, the FBC is not a new fee. Uh, written voters voted on this in 2016, and the state law requires that we come back after that six-year period. Once that's completed, for the next time, uh, agencies can go out for either a six-year, a 10-year, or a lifetime reauthorization of the FBC. And right now, the RFA is seeking a 10-year renewal. Uh, we're doing that for a couple of purposes. Uh, we have some capital projects coming up, and having a 10-year versus a six-year on the FBC gives us uh, better financial stability and will help when we go for a bond rating and will help with lower interest rates on that bond, uh, especially when we uh, rebuild Station 16. And that will end up saving the community some money. It will also help us save just a little bit on election costs. Each time we go out to election, there is a cost associated with that, as you know, determined by how many uh, ballot measures there are. Everyone pays their share. And so if we were to take this out uh, more often, we, it would, there would be a greater cost. And then, uh, as I'll talk about in a little bit, if it fails and we have to go back out, there's going to be a cost associated with that. So we're hoping that it'll be approved this time and we'll have that 10-year FBC in place. Another good news piece about the FBC is that discounts and exemptions apply. Low-income seniors or disabled persons who qualify for a property tax exemption under the listed RCWs receive the same percentage discount on their FBC as they do on their property taxes. We also give a discount for having a fire alarm with certificate of service. That's about 7.5% for that. And then we also give a 10% discount if you have a sprinkler system. The reason we do that is early notification it makes it so that we're on scene a lot more quickly, makes it so that we require less resources, there's less damage to the property, we can get uh, that emergency handled much more quickly and therefore we give that savings because uh, we've saved money on it ourselves not tying up a lot of crews and time in that emergency with that early notification. FBC also helps lower the property tax a little bit. 
bylaw, if an FBC isn't in place, we can collect up to $1.50 per thousand of assessed value on a home. But with the FBC in place, we can only collect up to a dollar, which is where we started initially. And that's why over time that has gone down. And again, we balance that other part of the funding formula out with the FBC. But as I said previously, the good news is we have not had to raise that and we're predicting we're not going to again next year. So again, it helps with that stability. A little bit more information about this. Uh, it provides funding for the firefighter staffing and training. As I said, this is about 40% of our overall annual budget. Uh, we use it to purchase our uh, fire engines, aid units, specialty vehicles, and equipment. It helps in the construction or remodel or maintenance of our new and existing fire stations. And it helps with the continuance of our public uh, programs such as public education, fire investigation, and the FD CARES program, which helps vulnerable community members. Uh, as you may be aware, we have an FD CARES program, which is for low acuity calls. We do that program in partnership with Puget Sound Regional Fire Authority and now with Skyway uh, Fire District. This is a a non-emergency response unit that is staffed by both a nurse and a firefighter and they are utilized on the calls where it, it, a person doesn't need to go to the hospital or they've been calling 911 a lot because they have other issues that they need solved sometimes it's they need social services sometimes they need help getting appointments with their doctors they need medications and so between the nurse and the firefighter they can spend the time necessary to help these people get the help that they need uh, they'll spend several hours if necessary where if we're sending emergency response crews, we have two choices. We either leave them at home or we take them to the hospital. And that has proven not to be as effective for what the patient needs. And so we're very pleased with this FT CARES program. I think it's a great service for the community. If approved, we're going to continue doing what we're doing now. And we will adjust our services as the community needs change. Uh, but we think that we're providing a very good level of service uh, for the community. If this proposition is rejected, we're going to try and figure out why that occurred. And we'll look at either going back out uh, at a different election time or uh, go, go back to the uh, $1.50 valuation or ability to charge for $1.50 based on assessed value uh, within the, the taxes on property. None of which we want to do. Uh, worst case scenario is we'd have to look at uh, reduced staffing or um, trying to cut some of the services. We don't think that's going to be a problem, but we're going to be prepared for everything that comes our way. Any more questions? We have a number of ways to get a hold of us. Uh, we can visit us online at www.rentonrfa.org slash proposition one. Give us a call at 425-276-9500. And we have a number of staff that can answer the majority of questions about the fire benefit charge. But if you, if someone has something very detailed and specific to their property, we will get them in touch with Lieutenant Laycock, who is the subject matter expert for everything about the fire benefit charge. And then we can also be sent an email at www.rentonrfa.org slash contact. And that is what I have for the presentation. Let me stop sharing my screen. Well, thank you, Chief. That was um, that was a lot of great information. Uh, I think really sort of succinctly provided, but but thorough. Um, I have a um, uh, hand raised by uh, Council Member O'Halloran. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Chief. Um, yes. My my question is, if this is a if Proposition One is approved. Um, do, does the charge for each household or business or property remain static through the next 10 years or is it indiced in any way within those 10 years? Within those 10 years, every year we come back to the governing board and we will already have determined if we can keep it static or if we need to raise some of those fees and then we go through that approval process from the governing board on whether or not we're going to raise those fees. So each year we go to them and, and make a, a presentation uh, based upon the budget and the expenses that we know are coming or at least we predicted. Okay, Does thank you very answer? much. Sure. Other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Uh, 
I think, um, yeah, I think that, I think chief, you covered, um, you covered it pretty well. I know most members of the council are pretty familiar with this. So, um, I'm looking again to see if anybody's got a hand up. If, if for some reason I'm missing it and you have a question, just speak up. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for the presentation. I want to thank council for, for being here and attentive and, uh, everybody else that's joined us from staff and, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the Committee of the Whole, and we'll reconvene at 7 o'clock as a City Council. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Stay safe.